Uh, this is unbelievable. So Michael Cohen, um, this poor guy, and, and, and I don't mean I have any sympathy for him. I, I would be, if someone someone uh, told me he's going to go to jail, actually the, you heard thir- three years, it's actually going to be 30 years. I, I would be fine with that. I, I, I don't, I'm not, when I say this poor guy, I'm not being sympathetic. I'm like, um, this Gloating. guy is so deluded uh, that it is stunning. Here is um, here is uh, Michael Cohen with uh, George Stephanopoulos sort of characterizing why he cooperated. When did it change? You know, I can't give you a specific time that it went from point a to point b it was just a change i will tell you Pause that the gen- i feel bad I, the him. change they're talking about is like when did you just go from the guy who would take a bullet for donald trump to the guy who's willing to uh provide uh evidence about what he's done wrong now remember michael cohen did not provide evidence about what michael cohen did wrong uh beyond what implicated trump that's why the southern district of new york said he was not cooperative with us he might have been cooperative with, with Mueller, but he was not cooperative with us. Um, I would submit that that moment of that change was the moment he realized he's not going to give me a pardon. He thinks he's insulated from this, and he doesn't think I'm enough of a liability to pardon. That son of a bitch. He was like my dad. Disingenuous best. Yeah, you're not my dad anymore. It was just... A change. I will tell you that the gentleman that is sitting now in the Oval Office, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, is not the Donald Trump that I remember from Trump Tower. Positive. Very- this is, this is the Donald Trump, Trump Tower was a piece of garbage. A racist piece of garbage who didn't pay people who worked for him. And that this guy would call up and threaten reporters. If they wrote about him, but go ahead. He's a very, he's a very different individual. What's happened to him? I think the pressure of the job is much more than what he thought it was going to be. It's not like the Trump organization where he would bark out orders and people would blindly follow what he wanted done. Good guy. There's a system here. He doesn't understand the system. And it's sad because the country has never been more divisive and one of the hopes that I have out of the punishment that I've received, as well as the cooperation that I have given, I will be remembered in history as helping to bring this country back together. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to tell him? Who's going to tell him? I think best that, case scenario, you're remembered for medallion scams. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Who's going to tell him, ah, Michael, I'm sorry. It turns out that the historians, they don't even need time to go by. They don't even need hindsight to tell you. In fact, we have a panel of 150 historians who have, we've gathered. And... Um, for every other question we presented to them, they said, we need more time. The only thing they came back on when we asked, is, My- is Michael Cohen going to be remembered as the guy who brought the country together? And the answer was hysterical laughter. And um, I mean, that's that that level of delusion is why I feel sorry for the guy. I feel bad for him. Man. Like somewhere around like month three, he's going to be sitting in prison going like, Nobody wants to write a book about me. He's like dim-witted Michael Clayton. Um, here is here he goes on the the level of delusion here is pretty good, uh, pretty high. But you have to keep reminding there yourself: there isn't a red America and a blue America. There's a fucking <laughs> United States of fucking America. You got to remember as you listen to this, and you're like, wait, how could this guy actually think this? You got to remember he also said at one point that he was willing to take a bullet for Donald Trump. So uh, here we go. President Trump is lashing out against you in such a personal way, daily almost now, calling you weak, calling you a liar. 
Is he afraid? Seems like it. That's what he does. That's what he does. Are you afraid of him? It's never good to be on the wrong side of the President of the United States of America. But somehow or another, this task has now fallen onto my shoulders. And as I also <laughs> stated, that I will spend the rest of my life in order to fix the mistake that I made. How are you going to do that? I don't know. Oh, man. Delusional motherfucker. I mean, listen, I'm going to I'm going to give this guy a break insofar as that maybe he's thinking, I got to do this for my kids. I got to make them think that dad is a hero because it's important for my kids. And I can appreciate that. Like sometimes you'll say to your kids, like if they're young, like, no, there is an Easter bunny or there really is a tooth fairy or something like that. You don't want to be the one to sort of like shatter. Uh, but that is I was in Bensonhurst doing a little bit of a a business project where we smashed cars into each <laughs> other for the insurance and whatnot. <laughs> and somehow through a series of events of my business ventures, this historic task of restoring the promise that is America fundamentally fell on my shoulders. You're a bunch of disingenuous bastards. <laughs> By the way, yeah. My daughter's a piece of ass, too, <laughs> not just a manga. I don't so get creepy. any credit for that. So uh, it's yeah, totally yeah, yeah. unfair. Did you hear the uh, the that, that comedian who worked on The Apprentice who said that... Um, yeah, we talked about it yesterday. Did about 15 minutes. We were it. very, very but, uh, into the Were we talking the about the Adderall being the issue? Yeah, we've talked about... We've talked about and the diet pills, specifically. Yep. But yeah, that type of thing. I, I really want whoever the Democratic nominee is to say something along those lines in a debate to trigger Trump. Cause I think like if you hinted at it enough for him to know what you were talking yeah, about, I don't know. I don't think there is any triggering uh, Trump. I mean, I think, Oh, so are you hot. kidding me? You're the Adderall snorter. Why? Well, You're know. the Adderall. You snort. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I think it'd be, no, the way, You're you, the, Adderall the way snorter. you do this is just like you say, you know, You've done nothing in terms of the uh, disaster that is opioids. We need to provide, um, you know, uh, uh, money for uh, to help people addicted to this. We need to um, have more stringent laws and even things like Adderall, for instance, yes, that's like so it's got that's, that's what I was thinking. Something like that. Or 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 if you want it to be way more chintzy, you go. And I find it stunning that you campaigned on addressing this crisis and you did nothing about it. And especially given your own personal background right. that you would sell out this kid's situation. What? Personal background. I would just say like, what about all the people that are crushing up Adderall and snorting it, Mr. President? What do you have to say about those people? <laughs> you go, you go on a Kasich and except there's a purpose to it, but it just sounds like a random, like, you know, people are, are, are crushing Adderall and snorting it right, right now. Yeah, in, in Do you realize that people are snorting yeah. Adderall off of executive yeah, they're, desks? They're snorting it off of executive desks because they can't read and they're having an anxiety attack right now. <laughs> and they don't know where their daughter is. <laughs> and they don't know where their daughter is. They're afraid of getting a statutory rape charge. It's and, happening right now. And the special prosecutor country. is on their ass. <laughs> You John must need to up his dose a little bit because it's not working. He's going to need a little bit more, I have a feeling, in the uh, coming uh, weeks. Uh, John